In the second module of this program, we will focus specifically on the composition and function of surfactant. Our learning objectives for this module are as follows. After completion of this set of modules, participants will be able to describe the composition of surfactant and its basic structure and function, discuss the effects of surface tension on alveolar and airway stability, and discuss the law of Laplace and how it can be applied to explain lung atelectasis and overdistension in preterm infants. Surfactant is a naturally occurring chemical produced by type 2 pneumocytes which operates at the air-liquid interface in the alveoli to decrease surface tension. The center of the image on this slide demonstrates a collapsed alveoli in the absence of surfactant, with resultant elevation in surface tension leading to atelectasis. Once collapsed, alveoli require higher pressures in order to reinflate. The alveolus on the left side of the image demonstrates an ideal open state due to the presence of pulmonary surfactant with a resultant lowering of alveolar surface tension. Reduction of surface tension improves lung compliance and helps to prevent alveolar collapse and lung atelectasis. As early as the 1920s, physicians hypothesized that a fundamental principle of respiratory mechanics was the retractile force of the lungs, which seemed to be dependent on the surface tension in the alveoli. Kurt von Niergaard speculated that atelectasis in the newborn could result from considerable retractive force of surface tension in the lungs. Mary Ellen Avery suspected that the lungs of infants who had died from a condition known as hyaline membrane disease were lacking materials known as surfactants that allowed the capacity to reduce surface tension when surface area was reduced, and she was able to demonstrate this deficiency of surfactant in a laboratory model. Sue Buckingham proposed that alveolar type 2 cells could be the producers of surface active lipids as they contained osmophilic lamellar inclusions. These inclusions were demonstrated to improve the capacity of lung extracts to lower surface tension. Subsequent researchers were able to characterize surfactant further. Lung lipid could be identified in amniotic fluid and used to predict lung maturity. Four surfactant-associated proteins were discovered and defined by their respective genes. The use of glucocorticoids to enhance lung maturation and postnatal administration of artificial surfactant heralded the advancements in care of respiratory distress syndrome that we have available for treatment of preterm infants today. Surfactant became FDA approved in 1990. Laplace's law provides a mathematical explanation of why surfactant is critical in maintaining alveolar expansion and preventing collapse. In this relationship, P represents the distending pressure required to resist collapse, T is the surface tension, and R is the radius. Laplace's law states that the pressure required to resist collapse of a spherical structure is directly proportional to the surface tension and indirectly proportional to the radius. Therefore, a large sphere requires less pressure to resist collapse compared to a smaller sphere. Applying Laplace's law to alveoli, we can understand why alveolar collapse and atelectasis occur in infants with respiratory distress syndrome, or RDS, which is secondary to surfactant deficiency. We can also understand the critical role of surfactant in decreasing alveolar surface tension. The pressure required to prevent alveolar collapse is directly proportional to the surface tension and indirectly proportional to alveolar radius. As per the calculation above, the smaller alveolus requires twice the amount of pressure of the larger alveolus to prevent collapse. The image above demonstrates how, as a result of this pressure gradient, air will be displaced from the small alveolus, which is under greater pressure, moving over to the larger alveolus. This process will continue until the smaller alveolus collapses and the large alveolus becomes overdistended. Type 1 pneumocytes form 97% of the lining of the lung alveoli. The flattened nucleus of a type 1 pneumocyte is located by the arrowhead in image A. Interstitial cells, which are denoted by the curved arrow in image A, synthesize and secrete the connective tissue components of the pulmonary interalveolar septum. Among these are elastin fibrils, which are important in maintaining the elastic properties of the lungs. Type 2 pneumocytes, denoted by the arrows in image A, are located in the walls of the alveoli and they produce and secrete surfactant material. Unlike type 1 cells, which are postmitotic 
or mature and no longer capable of undergoing mitosis, type 2 cells have retained the ability to divide to form either type 1 or type 2 pneumocytes in response to normal turnover, disease, or trauma. Type 2 cells extend their rounded cytoplasm and surface microvilli into the alveolus. As noted in image B, the type 2 pneumocytes have a single spherical nucleus. Among the various organelles of rough endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi complex are lamellar bodies, which are denoted by the red arrow. These are identified by a characteristic appearance similar to that of a sliced onion, and these contain surfactant material. They fuse with the surface plasma membrane, and surfactant is released to coat both type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. Type 2 cells form junctional complexes with type 1 cells. In the interstitial tissue are reticular fibers. Pulmonary surfactant is first recognized in lamellar bodies as early as the 24th week of gestation. However, surfactant lipids, particularly phosphatidylcholine, are not detectable in the amniotic fluid until the 30th week of gestation, suggesting a chronologic gap between surfactant synthesis and secretion. Labor probably shortens this gap because phospholipids are consistently found in the air spaces of infants born before the 30th week of gestation. Electron microscopy has shown that type 2 pneumocytes have several unique characteristics, including surfactant-containing lamellar bodies and extensive microvilli, which are shown in image C. This figure demonstrates a magnified view of surfactant production. The bottom half of the slide represents the type 2 pneumocyte in which surfactant production occurs. Surfactant is produced mainly in the type 2 cell, which is pictured at the center of this image. Components of surfactant are made in polyribosomes within the endoplasmic reticulum. The components are then modified in Golgi apparatus of the endoplasmic reticulum. To review, the rough endoplasmic reticulum makes proteins and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum makes phospholipids. Then, the components of surfactant are packaged into lamellar bodies in the cytoplasm. The lamellar bodies undergo exocytosis into the alveolus. At that time, they form the structure of tubular myelin, a lattice-like structure that is made up of blocks of phospholipid lined with surfactant proteins. Tubular myelin is then utilized in maintenance of the surfactant reservoir or is reorganized to form a bipolar monolayer of phospholipids and proteins in the alveolus, which constitutes the surfactant film. Compression of this film allows some components of surfactant, the unsaturated lipid and protein components, to be pushed out, resulting in concentration of the saturated phosphatidylcholine in the remaining material. Prior to birth, the alveolar pool is composed primarily of lamellar bodies and tubular myelin. After transition, the surfactant is utilized in the aeration of the lungs, and utilized surfactant is transitioned into an inactive vesicular form. These forms are used for recycling of the components of surfactant. Over 95% of surfactant is recycled, and these components can be recycled up to 10 times. Surfactant turnover takes about 10 hours, and the half-life of surfactant is approximately three days. In summary, surfactant is a substance that is produced by type 2 pneumocytes starting around the sixth month of gestation. It is composed of lipids and proteins and acts to improve lung compliance by decreasing alveolar surface tension. This concludes Module 2. Thank you for your attention. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.